Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick here at Holy Shepherd Luther Church at Hazlitt, Texas. It's good to be back with you all. Today is Tuesday. It's June the 6th. And I'm Deaconess Elizabeth. And we are going to be doing the litany, which is found in Lutheran Service Book on page 288. If you'd like to turn there now and join us. <clears throat> o Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schism and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word and with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand. To comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give, all, to give to all people concord and peace. To preserve our land from discord and strife. To give our country your protection in every time of need. To direct and defend our president and all in authority. And to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people to watch over and help all those who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness and in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. All right, and our reading today is going to be continuing in the Gospel of John. We are in chapter 11. We're starting at verse 38. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on, on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, 
nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. Jesus, therefore, no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from, went from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim, and there he stayed with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up from the country uh, to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus to say, saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should let them know so that they might arrest him. All right, so in John's gospel, we see that um, it's really this raising of Lazarus from the dead that begins to drive things forward. And you, you have the Pharisees now discussing amongst themselves about killing Jesus. There, there were a number of Jews who were at this miracle. Some of them believe in Jesus and, and accept him as the Messiah. And then some of them go to the Pharisees and, and sort of tell on Jesus. And that's what generates the Pharisees um, having their discussion about putting Jesus to death. It's, it's, it's ironic, it's interesting that Jesus does this miracle and they uh, seem to talk and recognize it as a miraculous sign, but yet they don't believe in it, they reject it. And, uh, you know, what, can, what greater miracle can there be other than raising someone from the dead, which is what Jesus does. Uh, but, but even that is, is rejected because the Pharisees are so hardened against Jesus and they're so defiant um, towards believing in him that even a resurrection they will not, uh, will not believe. And, and of course, the, the resurrection of Lazarus hints that Jesus, or, or establishes rather, that Jesus does have power over death and that he also, if he dies himself, it should be no um, surprise if he is raised, but uh, this notion here of, of raising Lazarus does not, um, does not resonate with them. It, it does not um, even grant the disciples the ability to look ahead and to see that, that Jesus himself will rise later. Uh, and that, of course, will come at the end of, uh, of John's Gospel as we move into um, the latter half of, of the book here, which we will do um, next time. No. Um, all right, Deaconess Elizabeth now is going to introduce the hymn for us today. Our hymn today is hymn 507, Holy, 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 and we're going to sing the first verse. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. Well, Elizabeth, what announcements do you have for us today? Well, tomorrow is Wednesday, so we will have our youth night at our normal time at 6 o'clock. So we'd love to have all of our youth out for tomorrow. Um, and then looking further ahead this weekend, we will have our Sprouts group meeting at 1 p.m. Um, so that's, again, for our younger kiddos around age 5, um, 5 to 10 years old. You're welcome to come for a Bible story, a craft, and, um, and um, some snacks. Um, and then um, also we are collecting some items for our incoming deaconess intern Claire Gerard So if you have not and would like to to do that uh, we have a pile started in Nice Hall 
uh, for that. And also, VBS starts next week on Monday. So if you are volunteering, uh, we'll need you to be here around 8.30 that morning. And uh, we'll have other instructions for you as well. Uh, but this Sunday, we will ask those of you who are th here to, to help us set up decorations as we prepare for VBS. And someone around here is having a farewell party this coming Saturday at 6.30 p.m. So we hope that you can make it. Um, if there's still time to RSVP, we really need you to because we're trying to get a head count to make sure that we have enough space available. So that's going to be this coming Saturday at 6.30. You can email me at cb2890 at egt.net if you would like to RSVP and you haven't had a chance to yet. Um, Season Saints is going to be postponed until uh, the 20th of June. So that's two weeks from today. Um, so um, but that'll be a good opportunity for those of you who come to meet our new incoming uh, Deaconess intern, Claire Gerard, who will be here for all that as well. Uh, we're continuing our Bible study this coming Sunday for Men's Breakfast on the Power and Primacy of the Pope. So that's going to be Saturday morning at 8 a.m., followed uh, by the elders' meeting at 9.30. And then, of course, later that night is Deaconess Elizabeth's farewell. That's all of the announcements we have for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you, and um, I'll be back tomorrow as we continue on with the Gospel of John.